Hello and welcome to lovely Glendalock. My name is Pat from Wicklow Willow and I'm going to talk today about St. Patrick, his lives and his legends. Behind me you'll see St. Mary's Church, a very little known gem of a church in, in Glendalock and on my other side you'll see Glendalock's iconic round tower. So today about St. Patrick, he was one of Ireland's three patron saints alongside St. Bridget and St. Colum Kill. St. Patrick was born in Britain in the late 4th century probably around 387 AD, but the date is unknown for sure. His father was a, from a Romanized family. Uh, his name was Calpurnius. They were a British family who would have been well off and lived the Roman lifestyle. His father was a deacon and his grandfather was a priest, so he came from a, a religious background. Patrick himself, when he was young, wasn't particularly religious. When he was 16, he was captured by Irish pirates or raiders and taken across the Irish Sea. He was forced into slavery and he worked as a sheepherd on the mountains of Ireland possibly in Mayo or Armagh, or Antrim, sorry. He served six years as a sheepherd and didn't like it at all. He found God again in his time there. He became very spiritual and very faithful and he had a vision one night that God was telling him to return home and that there was a ship waiting for him on the east coast of Ireland. The next morning he escaped from his captors and he trekked the whole way to the east coast and after with a little difficulty he found a boat and a passage back to Britain. After three days on the boat he landed on the east coast of Britain, probably in Wales. He then faced a long march to his homestead. He left with a crowd of his shipmates and they nearly starved on the 28th day journey. Patrick took to his knees to pray for food, for sustenance for them all. And within a short time, a herd of wild boar were spotted and they were able to feast on them. This was attributed by his followers as the first miracle of St. Patrick. Patrick then stayed at home for a long time studying Christianity. And during this time, he had a vision that he had to return to Ireland, that the voice of the Irish were calling for him to come and convert them. He went on to Auxair in France, and he studied to become a priest. He studied for quite a long time, and he was ordained by St. Germanus in France. He then set about returning to Ireland. The year for this was 432. Patrick came by boat again to Ireland, and he arrived at Wicklow Town. But the locals in Wicklow Town didn't care for him at all in his attempt to convert them, so they ran him back onto his boat. He headed north and he rested on an island off Skerries for a number of days before heading further north and he landed then at a little place called Saul up in County Down. He established his first church here and he began to convert people all around. He baptised thousands of Irish people, he ordained priests, he formed nunneries, he converted the sons of kings. He travelled all over Ireland with no legal protection, and this, off, this was not good for him. He was robbed, he was beaten, he ended up chained up for two months, um, possibly to be executed. But he toiled on and he stayed converting when he could. His great patience, his charm and his holiness saw him through, and um, he set up churches, he performed miracles, and he converted the Irish for many, many decades. He is said to have retired to the same village where he set up his first church, and that's Saul. Um, and that's where he wrote his letter, the Confessio, in which he laid down his life story. It's a long letter describing his life in modest and earnest terms. No, there's no sure date available for when St. Patrick died, but some say he lived to be about 120 years old. He's buried in Down Patrick beside St. Bridget. He was so successful at converting Irish because he incorporated pagan beliefs into his teachings. So instead of just trying to convert the pagan Irish directly to Christianity, he used their beliefs to help them convert more easily and effectively. He used bonfires to celebrate Easter. He added a sun motif to, to the Christian cross to create what we know now as the Celtic cross. And he used, most famously of all, the shamrock to explain the Holy Trinity to the pagan Irish. There are lots of miracles associated with St. Patrick. He himself says in his Confessio, that he raised 33 people from the dead and some were dead quite a long time when it happened. St. Patrick is also said to have banished all the snakes from Ireland. He was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights on a hilltop when he was set upon and bit by snakes. He didn't like this and he got quite angry and he chased them all to a cliff edge and banished them all into the sea. And since then Ireland has had no snakes. I think it's more to do with the Ice Age that they have no snakes but that's the legend associated with St. Patrick. In another tale St. Patrick once took a long time to convert a particular village. By the time he had finished converting them, his walking stick that he'd left beside when he entered the village had grown into a tree. 
St. Patrick was never officially ordained a saint by the Catholic Church, and that was because it was such an early time in the Christian period. He was announced a saint by clergy, bishops, and just through the strength of his legends. There are many beautiful works dedicated to St. Patrick's. Uh, lots of cathedrals, wells, there's stained glass all over Ireland, bells and shrines to be seen in the National Museum. And if these, any of these are within your 5k, you should try and arrange a visit when you can. Join us in our next series, in our next in our series of videos, to learn how to make your St. Patrick's Day giant shamrock. In the next workshop, we'll be looking at foraging the materials you need. After that, we'll be learning to make the first of a giant heart shape. And in the last workshop, we'll be joining them together to make your giant shamrock, which you will then decorate and put outside your home to mark St. Patrick's Day 2021. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk again soon.